today we're taking over the Seattle Mariners and finally ending that World Series drought. A team that got off to a slow start at the beginning of the season has turned things around and you can really thank the pitching staff. Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, Bryce Miller, and Brian Wu have all been fantastic. And of course you can't forget about the offense because they've had some pretty good pieces there too. You've got the superstar Julio Rodriguez who's been out there in center field. JP Crawford's had quite an underrated season so far this year. And then Teoscar Hernandez has really supplied some power for this lineup. Oh, can't forget about big dumper he's been adding some home runs too the only issue i have with this current mariners squad is i still feel like it's lacking just a little bit so that's where i'm gonna come in it's time to win a world series so talking about this team currently we're ranked 15th and to start this year since in real life we're already in september i feel like let's not worry about this season let's get to the off season and let's really start this rebuild or I guess more of a retool. Before we get any further, we've partnered with Underdog Fantasy. Go check them out for your daily fantasy sports. Here in September, I'm gonna be posting a lot more Pick'em entries, not just for MLB, but the NFL season is starting up. And it's not just MLB and NFL, they've got plenty of sports for you guys to all play. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you all sign up, use code ANT, and Underdog Fantasy will match your first deposit up to $100. Exclusive negotiations, I'm thinking of bringing back Luke Weaver just in case one of our starters is doing poorly and we need someone to cover until the all or until the trade deadline luke weaver is going to be that guy plus he wasn't that bad so i think we can get at least one more season out of him five mil not bad next up tom murphy for six mil for the next year essentially i'm just hoping that he can hold it down until harry ford's ready and then harry ford's going to be our catcher we do still have big dumper but i could just use him as a dh if need be and then we're going to try to bring back tay oscar for one more season yes the hitting stats are going down but those lefty numbers look too good to pass up super cheap deal yes he's coming off of a back a bad year but i think he'll have a little bit of a bounce back so what three three deals for about 15 16 mil not bad so with exclusive negotiations fully out of the way every player signed their deal i felt like looking at this team we were kind of lacking at the second base spot even third base since we do have suarez kind of playing that dh role i do think josh rojas can hold it down for a season or two or maybe we could look to sign somebody else but i feel like second base we could definitely upgrade and I think I found the player, Connor Norby of the Orioles, a player that I think they could trade in real life just because they have so many good young prospects for the middle infield and third base spot. I mean, they've got Jordan Westberg, Gunnar Henderson, Kobe Mayo, Jackson Holiday, and Joey Ortiz. On top of that, they still have Jorge Mateo and Ramon Rias. So like that middle infield's crowded. That's so what I was looking at it, Connor Norby or Kobe Mayo. I'm looking at, I think the vision and discipline are what's selling me on Connor Norby. A little bit more position flexibility too so we're gonna go for him to make the deal possible we have to get rid of robert perez jr who i think could potentially help us out at first base but realistically we can find somebody else and we still have ty france anyway so it's not like i'm in the biggest of rush to replace ty france i'm getting rid of dylan moore i just don't see him being part of the team long term he's got another year on his contract too so let's just get rid of him and then kind of the big piece with this one is marco gonzalez again he's got another year on his contract and even though i think he could be good for us like i think he could definitely help us out lefty decent per nines especially that walks per nine i just don't see him getting into the team when we have so many good young pitchers that it's just a crowded spot looking at the team i still think we could use a little bit more offensive firepower it just kind of seems like we're lacking a little bit plus i don't know if i can fully trust teoscar and eugenio suarez they might start to regress so I, it just feels like we need somebody that we can rely on day in and day out so i feel like we could use something i don't know if it's gonna be an outfielder an infielder it might be an outfielder though and then pitching wise i think if we're looking at it i think bullpen needs one more arm i think just in terms of mlb the show we need to just get a little bit better not too much but just a little bit i need a lefty in the bullpen i don't really want to go out and get the top lefty because i feel like it's going to cost too much i'm going to get aaron ashby for casey sadler so we're about to start season one but really quickly let me highlight some of the draft picks that we had because this draft went crazy i mean look at how good we did the only player below 80 potential was a 77 potential player doyle massey was our first first pick with high 80s potential I just felt like let's go with the bat there were only a couple that I really liked from this draft so I think he could be a face that we see in the lineup in a couple seasons pitchers that might be a little tougher because we have Frazier Murillo and McCauley all pretty low rated potentially Frazier just because his walks per nine is pretty high but we'll have to wait and see we also do have Medrano who again is a little bit higher than the other guys but again 63 is 
pretty low. Vince Ricks could be that guy that features, but we do have some other pitchers that I would prefer over him. And then the guy that had 99 potential, Willie Sanchez, I decided to make him a rel reliever just because he had low stamina. And I feel like if he develops quickly, he could be a really good reliever or closer for us. Other prospects within the team, we do have Emerson Hancock. It's just right now he's kind of blocked with the other starters and bullpen options that we have. So I want to get him in there. We'll just have to wait and see. Realistically, Robbie Ray's fighting for that spot. So if he doesn't do well, Emerson Hancock's right behind him. Harry Ford's the catcher I'm waiting for. It just depends on how quickly he can develop because the numbers look good right now. I just need them a little bit better. Cole Young is a name that I know is rising up prospect lists for the Mariners. Along with Colt Emerson, both of these guys could feature, but they're both fairly young. So we'll have to wait and see. And then Baby Jordan, another young player who's somehow grown to like six foot seven. The guy looks like an absolute freak. Again, could be someone that we see. Who knows? But let's now talk about what we did in free agency, starting with the minor league pickups that we did. For pitching help, I went with Bryce Jarvis. Again, I just needed some starting depth. And then we had three relievers who were in their late 20s of Brandon Hughes, Lucas Gilbreth, and Jake Cousins. Seeing potential, so they could end up being bullpen pieces for us. And then the two bats were Bobby Dahlbeck and also Mike Talkman. We'll see if they feature, but I figured I should point them out so you guys know they're on the team. For major league help, I went with Edmundo Sosa as one of our guys. And the other was Ryan O'Hearn. Outside of that, the other big splash that I made was Kevin Kiermeyer. I felt like we needed a an offensive bat. And you know what? I don't go for Kevin Kiermeyer often. I like his hitting numbers. I think he could be okay for a season. So now looking at the team as a whole, I feel like this team is good enough to compete for the postseason. The West is going to be tough. We're currently ranked seventh. I think pitching is definitely carrying us because when you look at the contact and the power, it's definitely not that great. And with the Angels, the Astros, and the Rangers, it's going to be pretty tough to compete with all of them. Especially when the Angels were able to retain Otani, even though in real life he ain't coming back. The Astros are still a really strong team, and they've added the bat of Mitch Garver, so there's that. And then the Rangers are just the Rangers. They're just a really good team. So let's see what we could do in this first season. I feel good. We might need to make a couple changes at the deadline, but let's see what happens. So we're at the deadline. Things aren't going to plan. We're currently 15 and a half out of the division. I mean, also the rangers are doing really well the astros are doing really well and so are the angels so like we're in a really competitive division like i said we would be in terms of the wild card we're five and a half out so we're still gonna go for it like we're still in the race it's just a very competitive race and it's really being held down by the pitching yes kirby struggling a little bit but outside of that you know, Robbie Ray struggling a little bit too, apparently. But for the most part, pitching is doing really well. Hancock has come up for Wu because Wu was struggling in the long relief role. And then bullpen wise, we need to find someone to replace Campbell. We just don't really have anybody that I trust yet. Like, I don't really want to go to Diego Castillo. I just don't trust him. So I definitely want at least like a one year rental type reliever this year. I feel like that's what we need. And offensively, Teoscar struggling versus lefties, which isn't ideal. Like Tom Murphy sucks, you know, Haggerty, Rojas. It's not looking great. I had to send down Norby as well because he was struggling. Got to get him back into this lineup though. But yeah, we just, we need a little bit of help offensively because like Suarez is struggling too. We're just lacking and even JP Crawford's having a bad year too. So we need, we need somebody that can step it up a little bit. So I don't know if I'm looking for like a starter long term or just someone that can help us out for like a season or two offensively because we do have some prospects like um, Harry Ford obviously is developing. Bobby Dahlbeck is not really a prospect, um, but he was mashing in double A. So I called him up to triple A because I mean, plus seven, like that's crazy. Uh, Doyle Massey's going up by a crazy amount, plus 11 versus lefties. He's, he's getting on base has a decent on base percentage too it just doesn't have any power and then Cole Young is also developing quite nicely along with Cole Emerson so we, we've got some names you know I'm keeping my eye on this guy too he's also developing pretty quickly so our prospects are developing um we're just not there quite yet so I don't know if I need a, a like a guy right now that could play for two three seasons maybe longer or like just a one-year guy we'll, we'll have to wait and see what I can find but I think bullpen it's probably the most important right now. All right, I'm going to pick up Gimme Garcia, the Car not Cardinals. The Blue Jays are like 44 and 63. He's having a pretty decent year. Only pitched in 20 innings, but he's a pretty easy, cheap pitcher to get. So we're going to trade Jimmy. Oh, it's Jimmy. Jimmy Garcia for Kaden Palkovich. Jonathan Aranda is a player that really can't crack into the Rays lineup. And I thought, you know what? He's pretty versatile. He's got some really good hitting stats, hasn't played yet in the majors and can kind of help us out in pretty much a couple different positions if we really need him to. So I'm going to pick him up. It's going to be Walking Cabrera, who looks decent 
it's just again like we've got Gonzalez, we've got J Rod, you know, Cal Nick, potentially Montes. We we've got a couple outfielders that I feel like are gonna block him anyways. And then on top of that, we're gonna send Riley O'Brien, who's down here, 29 years old. I'm okay with that. And then Ty Attic, who's a lower rated reliever that I'm just not gonna use for a guy that I think could definitely stick in our lineup for the future. I think that's a good move. Then I'm gonna go and get some more reliever help from the Cubs in Michael Rucker and Daniel Palencia for Diego Castillo and Evan White. Evan White's a salary dump. And Diego Castillo, I just don't see him in the team moving forward, so might as well make a move. This is what the team looks like after those moves. Jimmy Garcia comes in. That's really about it. We do have Palencia, who's going to slot in here. And then we've got a couple other relievers that we've got, of course, Michael Rucker also. And then in terms of the lineup, we've got this. Uh, the bench looks okay, actually. It looks pretty good. And then I've kind of moved things around. I'm probably going to move it around a little bit more. But with Aranda in now, I feel like there's a pretty good lineup. I, I feel good about it. The season is over and we're a playoff team, which is pretty good. We're a wild card spot. And if you look at September, we went on an absolute tear. Only losing, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times in the month. I'd say that's pretty good. And in the end, that actually got a second in the division and the number one wildcard spot. So pretty good way to end the year, considering we were pretty low in the standings at the trade deadline. For MVP, it was Aaron Judge beating out Otani and J-Ram. You've got Soto and then Pete Alonso and Tatis are second and third. Joe Musgrove is a Cy Young winner along with Jacob deGrom. Judge and Soto are the batting title winners. And then Al Zalai along with Brock Burke are the relievers of the year. Rookie of the year goes to Jason Dominguez who hit a home run off Justin Verlander in his debut in real life. And Joey Loperfito, who I believe is actually an Astros prospect. And it was actually someone that I considered trading for to help us out just as like a, a D platoon guy off the bench and plus seven plus 13 the reason i didn't trade for him was just because he was an astro and i felt like trading within a division probably not the best move but i've seen i've seen this guy pop off for like a season or two and i think he would have been a decent little bat for us so maybe maybe for a future rebuild we'll see what we can do oh i see we we, we made some changes pitching rotation wise i swapped robbie ray and emerson hancock just because robbie way Wabi Way, Wabi Way, Robbie Ray was, he wasn't struggling too much, but I felt like Emerson Hancock, let's give him a shot in the five spot. Yeah, paying 23 mil for like a sixth starter, probably not the best, but he didn't really have that bad of a year. Like a 4-2 ERA, really not the worst, 1-3 whip, really not that bad. Let's take a look at his FIP really quick, just to get an idea of where we're at. 3.95, so a, a little bit better, but you know what? It's not too bad. Aaron Ashby, we picked him up through the trade with the Brewers, and again, for a lefty reliever that really wasn't too difficult to trade for. I thought this was a pretty decent pickup for us. And also just lefty relievers in general are pretty tough to find, especially lefties for the long term. Normally you can only get like a season or two out of the veterans. And then from there, you got to get lucky and find another lefty. But Aaron Ashby, I think we'll be able to hold on to him for a couple seasons. Matt Brash kind of regressed considering, you know, like 2023 numbers, but I still expect him to do well. We've got Tyler Saucedo, who looks good. Like that's pretty, those are the numbers I'm looking for, for sure. Jimmy came in, gave us a few innings. I think it was 11 innings that he ended up pitching with us and was fantastic. Just what I needed, just a short-term pitcher to really bolster the bullpen. Penn Murphy was outstanding. And then Andres Munoz, yeah, give me more of that. Let's take a look at our starters with Luis Castillo. Yeah, that is what I want from Luis Castillo. He's the ace, giving me ace numbers. Logan Gilbert right behind him, probably gonna overtake Castillo at some point and was even better. So perfect. George Kirby right behind him, fantastic. Bryce Miller. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Crazy good numbers. And then Emerson Hancock, pretty similar to what Robbie Ray was putting up, maybe slightly better. And I think moving forward, he's going to be the guy that we look for in this five spot, which could mean that we look to move Robbie Ray this offseason, maybe get some sort of prospect. Or depending on how the free agency pool looks, we could look to find an outfielder because we don't necessarily have one. I ended up having to put Taylor Trammell on the waivers and someone picked them up. I think it was the Blue Jays actually that ended up picking up Taylor Trammell. They did, and he was terrible for them. So yeah, we didn't get to trade him, but he went to a different team. And I also think a pitcher that I put on waivers got picked up. Um, it was like a, ooh, it was... It was someone low 70s that I just wasn't going to use moving forward. And I, I put him on waivers to open up a 40 man spot and uh, a team picked him up. I think it was like the Pirates or something like that. Maybe the Rockies. But either way, Suarez contract year. 22 home runs isn't bad. You know, not too far off of what he put up last year. But again, I think we just need to find someone a little bit younger. I think we need to get rid of some of the older guys. Just bring in a little bit younger who can help us out off the bench or even start. You know, we've got Teoscar who was 
pretty similar to last year. Only faced lefties this year, but he just really didn't put up the same numbers, which is disappointing. Josh Rojas off the bench. I think that's going to be his main role moving forward. And then catcher wise, Tom Murphy might have been his last year. We'll have to wait and see. And then I just called up Talkman because where is he? Sam Haggerty was not good. So we're going to see how Talkman does in the offseason. We've got Connor Norby who can come up and help us out again next year. Harry Ford's definitely going to come up and then he'll probably face lefty as well. Big dumper faces righty. Still get that platoon matchup that we've got. And we'll see what we do with some of the other young guys, but they're not too far off. Let's take a look at our actual starters. Kevin Kiermaier was actually pretty good. Was this the only time he's put at 800 OPS in his career? Hey, there we go. Got to have a first for something. And also, was this a career high for home runs? I told you, you know what? For one year, I'll take that from Kevin Kiermaier. Julio Rodriguez put up fantastic numbers. Love to see that. We've got Ty France right behind him, who, yeah, the power numbers may not be there, but the on-base percentage and average were good. The slugging wasn't there, but everything else was fine. The, what? Cal Raleigh better not be regressing. I need him to hit righties. That's literally what I need him to do, but decent season. Can't complain about it. Cal Nick, again, not a bad season. Need to get that on-base percentage up a little bit, but we'll see what happens moving forward. O'Hearn, I was just looking for someone to hit righties. He hit 22 home runs. I'm, I'm okay with that. And also, he was like one mil, so not the worst. Edmundo Sosa came in. He wasn't bad, probably could have just stuck it out with Norby, but for almost a 300 average, I think that's pretty good. You know what, again, a one year deal, we can pick him up with arbitration. So essentially he could probably take, what, Suarez's spot on the bench or Haggerty's spot on the bench. Aranda came in, gave us a 280 average with six home runs, one triple and seven doubles, 26 RBIs. Okay, 350 on base percentage and 800 OPS, yes. It was only 150 at bats, but you know what? I, I feel good about this pickup. I think this one's going to be a little bit underrated. Gives us a little bit more, more flexibility with our, our team because we've got Rojas can play a couple different positions. Aranda can play a couple different positions. Sosa can play a couple different positions too. Norby can play a couple different positions on the infield. I feel like infield wise, we're looking pretty good. Plus we do have Cole Young, Colt Emerson looking solid. JP Crawford though. I, I need better. I need better. We've got two more years and I need him to turn it around because I actually wanted him to be our shortstop for the entire rebuild, but I can't have that if he's not putting up good numbers. So here we go. Postseason time against the Rays. This is a tough matchup. So we'll see what happens. Um, no DH. I'm not worried about. We're good to go now. Let's see how we do. And it comes down to Kirby. We lose eight to one. So, I mean, putting up two runs over the last two games, can't expect to win. The Dodgers end up defeating the Guardians in the World Series four to three. Freddie Freeman is the MVP. Okay, that makes sense. Did that say the Cubs won the World Series last year? It did. If the Cubs win the World Series in real life this year. Ooh, I'm gonna go crazy. Either way, retired players, nobody. Oh wait, Verlander. Okay, I'm assuming both of yeah. Verlander wasn't a Hall of Famer. But Scherzer was, and then also Miggy. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Kiermaier, I'm going to say no. He's regressing. We've got Teoscar, potentially. Potentially. I like that he went up in rating this year. I feel like maybe, just maybe, Suarez is regressing, so I think I'm going to pass on him. Tom Murphy, we've got Harry Ford. Luke Weaver didn't really improve at all in AAA this year. I was kind of hoping he maybe went up to like maybe 75, maybe 76, and then I would have brought him back. And then Jimmy Garcia, I'm going to let walk because like I said, he was a rental. So Teoscar is on my my watch, like my little, my short list of players that I might, my, I might bring them back. Might just pick them up in free agency. We'll have to wait and see. Soda's available. Bueller's available. O'Neal, Adamas, Woodruff, Pete Alonzo. There's some really good names available. And I'm trying to see what we do here. I could bring back O'Hearn or I could go in a different direction. Do we have, I don't, I like we have Tyler Locklear. Norby's going to come back up, right? Rojas, Sosa, JP Crawford, Talkman potentially. So we, we definitely need some outfield help. Uh, Lazaro Montes is not ready. Canzone's okay. You know, Cade Marlowe is okay, but they're just they're just not good enough. And if we're trying to win, we need to take that next step. So I think I I think like an actual outfielder is is 
you know, someone that we need to pick up, someone that can just help us out. And Montes at some point was getting to the team. I mean, he's growing too quickly, not not to like not to put him in the team. So let's let's add the guys to the 40. Let's get through arbitration. And I think I think the big one is going to be let's get a really good outfield bat, which would be Soto. But I think we'll switch it up. I think there's going to be a couple guys that we could turn to that might that might be a little bit different. We'll see. We'll figure something out. I mean, Pete Alonso, that'd be an interesting pickup. Let's talk about the draft picks really quick because there are a couple that could feature could feature uh Kret Lowe's potentially 170 overall 70 ish potential I think it's like 74 so there's a chance he features we'll see but Hendricks has got the hitting stats that he's one of those guys that we could probably use at some point kind of looks like Massey who we just drafted but good hitting stats and then of course a couple other guys 66 60 overall Irving Haley looks pretty good also like can't field has no speed definitely a first baseman but you know what also no power for a guy who's 6'4 to 13 but you know what he, he can hit and then we've got uh Plantini um yeah I think that's how it would be said and then Emmett McCracken so there's that all right let's start season two with acquisitions for AAA because there was just a couple but we needed some pitching depth the first one was Jose Leclerc I figured let's pick him up one year deal can't be too much 1.7 mil only pitched one inning last year so we'll see what he can do 31 years old but like I said just in case we needed a reliever he's there for us and the other one was another one that was within the division, Carlos Estevez, which again, you know, 32 years old, again, another one year deal, fairly cheap. I just needed some depth. So we'll see what he can do. Has it been too great? So we'll see. In terms of offense, not much has changed. I decided to kind of keep it the same and same with the pitching, you know, like I did bring in a couple relievers just in case, but I'm going to give Robbie Ray one last chance. We'll see what happens. He is 33. He's got two years left on his deal. We'll see if we can maybe move him if things aren't going well. But just over a four ERA last year, I'm kind of hoping we can get it into the threes. I'll give him till around the deadline. If things aren't looking great, we'll turn back to Emerson Hancock, who put up a really similar year to what Robbie Ray did last year. And um, I just feel like let's give Robbie Ray one more shot to see what he can do. I decided to bring back Teoscar, 5 million. And yes, the production wasn't great last year versus lefties. And that's really what he's supposed to be hitting. Again, that's what I'm going to use him as. I felt like as a cheap option for solely a DH, can't go wrong. Or maybe it is going to be the wrong move and we might have to make an acquisition at the deadline, but we'll have to wait and see. I think just for lefties though, as a DH 5 mil, it's worth the risk. And this was our big money splash this offseason. Tyler O'Neill, 29 years old. I needed one outfielder to play every single day. And for around 14 mil over the next five years, yes, the injuries could be a problem in real life if this move were to actually happen. But you know what? I felt like for the storyline, him being from Canada, I mean, literally just across the border, he is from Western Canada. I actually think it's like literally right above the border. So I thought, you know what? It'd be kind of a cool storyline, kind of, kind of like a hometown ish kid and last season wasn't bad you know 260 with an 848 ops and almost 30 home runs pretty decent plus the hitting numbers look good and i think he kind of slots in in that left field spot kelnick will move to right and then we'll have uh, j rod in center so the only other thing i need to point out is ty france is in a contract year so potentially in a market for a first baseman realistically i'm going to try to keep ty france as long as possible we'll have to wait and see so yeah this is the team cal raleigh is going to be fighting for his spot against harry ford that's kind of the other matchup to really look forward to this year but overall i like the team canzone's going to face righties tay oscar is going to face lefties and then we've got some some young guys to keep an eye out for so we'll see what cole young can do his righty numbers look pretty good already we also have montez and where is he is he still in single a emerson do i still have him in single a i do that's okay i think we'll be okay there so let's see what happens we've got some young guys that i'm excited for we're currently ranked sixth in baseball i feel like that's pretty good for season two or our season two we're at the deadline and things are looking pretty good we're tied for the division currently with the rangers astros not too far behind us and we're currently ranked sixth now so we've moved up a little bit the one position I'm looking at is a possible Penn Murphy replacement just because he is starting to regress a little bit and the season it's not bad but I feel like we could do a little bit better we do we do have the guys here in the farm system that we could turn to you know Palencia is developing nicely Brandon Hughes is having a good year Michael Rucker is having an okay season not bad at all um, Saucedo had to get sent down he had a eight ERA just just couldn't really 
figure it out, which is kind of tough because I know in real life, he's been a pretty decent arm for the Mariners this year. Leclerc's not doing that great. And then Estevez has only pitched five innings or Estevez, sorry. Um, and that was because he was put in double A for some reason. Um, Willie Sanchez, the starter turned reliever. I might actually just turn him into a closer completely because he's been decent. Walks are a little bit of an issue. But overall, not bad. He's actually been pretty good in the, the farm system. So uh, Brian Wu is also developing pretty nicely this year, which is good to see. Um, he's been kind of one of those guys that just hasn't figured it out just yet. But as you can see, we're going to rock with Emerson Hancock. So Robbie Ray, let's... Oh, do we keep him for the rest of the year? Trade him in the offseason and then turn to Brian Wu? as our sixth man or do i just i mean he's 11 and 2 so it's not like he's doing that bad what's his fit let's see here it is 3.8 like it's he's not he's not performing badly right but he's not developing at all he's not i'm, I'm just worried he's gonna regress so maybe we let him s sit it out as the sixth man this year and then we we trade him in the offseason that could be a move just to get a little bit younger open up a little bit of money too in the books but lucas gilbreth has been called up pitch seven innings but like i said i think pen murphy is the guy i'm just gonna look to just find a replacement for it. again he hasn't been bad it's just i'm worried he's gonna start to regress a little bit and we've seen the best from him so lineup wise though cal raleigh is regressing which is super disappointing because I was kind of hoping the big dumper could do something for us. Um, offensively, he just he just kind of cooled off a little bit. And I just felt like, you know what? Let's turn to Harry Ford. Yes, there's gonna be some growing pains, but let's just he's he's growing. Like let's just let's just give him the keys to the position and see what he can do for the season. Tay Oscar's hit 280 versus lefties this year, already close to matching his home run total from last year, which is awesome to see. And then I think outside of that, everybody else is performing really well. Like I'm I'm really happy about the way the team looks right now everything's going great let's get that reliever and i already have the guy in mind it's going to be dylan coleman of the last place royals i looked around to see what teams were doing poorly the royals I'm taking their best reliever. Um, Dylan Coleman, he's got a couple years left on arbitration as well. Has a good season this year, had a good season last year. Hasn't been used that much, but I think we can we can use him. We can get we can get involved here. They want a second baseman. I am gonna trade Jose Caballero to make this deal possible. And I think that's really it. I think the team otherwise has been doing fantastic. I don't really want to change up too much more. Like, like maybe a bench bat, but I feel like we've got we've got a couple guys that we could turn to here like cole young has gotten off to a cold start in triple a this year but oh maybe maybe like Cade marlowe could come up instead of talkman that's really that's really like the only change that we could do you know i feel like the team otherwise has been pretty good i should oh i don't have a 40 man spot so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna maybe keep talkman for a little bit more and if things don't go well i'll, I'll turn to Cade marlowe but overall we're doing really well let's let's keep the team the same so we won 103 games this year but sadly wild card spot wild card team taking on another division rival in the astros so let's take a look four games behind the rangers the rangers are going to be tough i mean let's take a look and see what their what their team looks like just be just to get an idea so bubba thompson low yeah seager's good adolis garcia's good Semyon, young duran heim and Tavares. i mean that's a good team dylan cruz how did they get do they still have do they still have wyatt langford too because that would be a great they do they have langford and dylan cruz how did that happen and then they're pitching of course we know DeGrom Gray. Yeah, I mean, th that's a good team. Like, the pitching isn't as good. Their bullpen's really solid. Like, really, really good. But, man, that's tough. And then, of course, the Astros, we know, is going to be pretty solid with Tucker, Altuve, Jordan, Muncy, OK, Pena, McCormick. And they're pitching Valdez. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough division. I mean, what, what was the Angels record? 77 to 85. So not as good. But, like, man, that's, that's tough. So as a team, you know, offensively, we were, where are we? 13th batting average. Average wise it's better you know we were kind of towards the bottom recently and then runs wise we're top 10 so like we're putting in work offensively and of course pitching wise we're probably one of the best teams in baseball per usual top three actually once the rangers are number one so that just kind of gives you an idea of what we're competing with and then the astros are top 10 so the division has three of the top 10 pitching staffs in all of baseball just just a based on ERA. League leaders, Robbie Ray had the best winning percentage and Andres Munoz had the best had had something and i don't i don't remember was it saves was that what that was i feel really bad that i missed that now it was saves 56 it's pretty impressive so what i mean the team the team definitely has some missing pieces who is that that is 
Aranda. So Aranda got sent down. So let me rearrange everything and then we'll talk about the team. All right, let's talk about the awards. We always forget the awards. Uh, Bo Bichette took away the MVP from Judge, who finished second. Bo Bichette had 50 home runs. That's impressive. Acuna won it on the other side. Christopher Morel was in second. We've got Gallen and McClanahan as the Cy Young winners. Luis Castillo was in the race. Just couldn't beat out the other two. Acuna and Judge batting title winners. Class A and Alzali are the relievers of the year. Where is... Where's Munoz? Where's Munoz? I feel like he should at least be in the race based on the fact that he led the league in saves. And then Heston Kierstead was the rookie of the year beating out Rick Grant and Colt Keith. And then Johandi Morales of the Nationals hit 30 home runs in his rookie year. That's that's pretty good. Bobby Miller had a pretty good year along with William Chen for the Cubs. Okay, so I looked at the team a little bit. Um, things have moved around quite a bit. So this lefty, I don't know who to turn to. Brandon Hughes pitched four innings, struggled, right? Saucedo struggled. So do I do I just stick with Gilbreth, who pitched 13 innings, also struggled? Or do I go to like one of the other guys? I don't really know who to go to right now, but we'll, we'll have to figure it out. So we're going to rock with two long relievers. Emerson Hancock kind of cooled down towards the end of the season, which sucked because he was sitting around a three and a half, three, seven ERA in the long relief spot. And then once I started giving him those starts, he started to struggle a little bit. So I don't really know what to do. You know, Robbie Ray has proven that he's a solid starter, you know, and he is regressing. So even though he is a solid starter, I think it's best to probably trade him. We also do have Brian Wu. So we could just rock with Emerson Hancock as the, the long reliever still and let Brian Wu, who developed really nicely this season as that starter, right? Because we didn't really give him a shot after that first year where honestly, after the first season, I probably should have stuck with him because he really wasn't that bad. I think I judged him a little too harshly. Aaron Ashby, really strong season once again, improved from last year. Matt Brash, definitely improved. Love to see that. Isaiah Campbell, huge step forward. Love it. That's a, that's a good season right there. Gilbreth struggled. It's going to be the walks. The walks are going to be an issue with him, so hopefully he can turn it around. And then Dylan Coleman, I think, is going to be our setup guy moving forward. I think that was the right pickup. And then look at Munoz. I mean, that is, I'm just saying, he should have been in the race for reliever of the year. That's just me. So we saw Robbie Ray's season again, you know, 16 and three. He also had a save. So good for him. The first career save, by the way, um, almost 190 innings pitched. He had a good year. Uh, you know what? Respect to Robbie Ray. The guy deserves it. The one thing is I'm worried about the regression. So that's kind of why I want to trade him. That's just kind of the big thing here. 2.6 war. Yeah, the numbers are good. FIP went up a little bit over a four, but again, a good season. I got to give it to him. Respect given when deserved. So Luis Castillo, solid once again, was a Cy Young candidate for a reason. Logan Gilbert right behind him had a really good season. We've got Kirby who also had a really good year. Like this pitching staff is very good also bryce miller really solid so vance ricks guy with c potential is pitching really well in triple a we'll have to keep an eye on him dollard yeah hasn't really done much i did lose easton mcgee to waivers because i took him off the 40 man um he went to kansas city so um the issue with easton mcgee was he just wasn't improving like one per nine would go up a little bit and then the other per nines would go down it was just kind of like up and down with him couldn't really put it together so sadly i'm not going to be able to feature him but we do have a couple other pitchers you know like frazier's up to a 70 it's interesting to see we've got mario here who they keep taking out of the starter spot and then our closer willie sanchez who just continues to develop which is awesome to see and then we do have some pretty good depth in terms of bullpen so i'm excited to see what we can do i might call up estevez i might do it i'll leave it all right let's talk about the lineup now because Cal Raleigh turned things around towards the end of the season, so I might actually do this for the postseason. He gets hot at the right time. Plus, Harry Ford struggled a little bit. Let's just take the pressure off. He can only face lefties. Hopefully, that'll help him out. Talkman wasn't great, even though he improved. Just wasn't that good. To Oscar, though, yes, put him in that lefty DH spot. 278 average, 833 OPS. Again, and Mundo Sosa wasn't terrible. Like, I don't hate the season he put up. And then the other guy that we had, um, Canzone, he struggled in his appearances along with Cade Marlowe. I gave him a few. Six, 17 at-bats is kind of tough, but didn't really do much. So, J-Rod, leadoff. Okay, not a bad season, but he's definitely not our leadoff guy, right? We definitely need to maybe rearrange a couple things. Kelnick had a good year, 32 home runs. Can't complain about that. Ty France, okay. Contract year, definitely going to have to pay him, but really solid season. Was that a career high for home runs? It was. Good job, Ty France. O'Neal, a potential. 
Okay, 90 overall, 38 home runs. Ooh, ooh. I like that. Okay, Aranda cooled off so much after the deadline. Huge disappointment. Didn't improve in terms of overall, but like a lot of pluses. So I'm not too upset. I feel like maybe he won't be our starter long term, but I think he can at least play a position somewhere in the team, right? I think maybe like a Edmundo Sosa replacement and we can turn to one of our other guys. But Cal Rowley, we saw his numbers, 15 home runs, same as last year, in way less at bats, which is really impressive. So like he got hot at the right time. Josh Rojas has been pretty decent off the bench. So I can't complain about that. Norby had a pretty okay season, nothing too crazy, but at least it was an improvement. And JP Crawford turned things around. Yes, the slugging isn't that high, but at least the average and on-base percentage is good. Plus he's coming into a contract year, so we gotta keep an eye on that. He's been okay he's been okay we'll see how he does in his contract year because he's got some young guys right behind him this guy I'm, I'm watching i'm gonna see what he can do in the offseason so or at least next year that's kind of the big deciding factor and then lazaro montes is up to a 72 so i'm thinking maybe a september call up for him maybe a september call up for young we'll have to wait and see but it is postseason time now um oh i almost simmed our wild card game Game one, let me sort out the lineup. All right, here we go against the Astros, and we lose the first four to two. We win that one. It comes down to Kirby versus Christian Javier. There we go. We're taking on the Rangers, though. So it's not like it gets much easier. And I think Robbie Ray is the odd guy out here. So let's go back to the top of the rotation after Bryce Miller. Oh, man, 10 to two, man. Okay. Next game. Two to one. That's a tough one. It's a tough one. Oh boy. Third game. The Rangers are gonna be tough to beat. The Rangers are gonna be really tough to beat. I don't I don't really know what to expect now. That's that's tough. The Rangers defeat the Cubs. The Cubs are now in their second World Series. The Rangers win it. Uh that yeah, the Rangers are gonna be tough to beat unless like actually hold on. We might we might be in business. Adolis Garcia is 32. You got the ground 36. He's gonna start to regress. John Gray is a free agent. Okay, we might we might be okay. They they do have some older players. We might we might be okay. We might be all right. They might start to fall down a little bit, but they do have Wyatt Langford, Dylan Cruz. They do have a couple younger players, so it'll be interesting to see how they change it up a little bit. But Teoscar was good. Um, he's gonna be another one of those where like, do I just keep him around? Six mil was really good he is 33 he improved though so you know what let me let me bump it up he, we're just gonna keep him around he's just a fan favorite we'll keep him in that dh spot i did say i wanted to keep around france i'm thinking like three years let's go three years seven and a half mil let's or 7.3 mil we're gonna do three years 7.3 mil and uh, i feel like that's good i feel like that's that's plenty Estevez, let's do one more year. He doesn't, oh, he only wants like one and a half mil. Yes. And then Leclerc, you know what? Sure. Why not? Again, he only wants like two mil. Can't, can't complain. We have so much money available. I'm not stressed about, I'm not stressed about it at all. We haven't been spending big. We've been really smart with the pickups. We're just in a really tough division. That makes it, makes it a little bit of a challenge. So 40 man, I think we're okay. Maybe Farmelo gets added, but our 40 man's pretty crunched right now. So I have to wait and figure out who I want to let go of. I don't know. Maybe Haggerty gets cut. Rucker. Maybe. Ooh, Talkman. Yeah. Talkman's got to go. Talkman's a spot that'll open up. Dahlbeck. Maybe keep him. I don't know. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to move some players around. Open up some spots because I at least want to sign somebody. It's just like, who am I replacing? I like this team. Do I find like an actual DH? Josh Rojas has been good though. So it's it's an interesting one. We've got plenty of money. I can literally go out and sign whoever I wanted and still be perfectly fine. So let's see what we do for season three. But start season three, we gotta make a couple trades and I feel like our offense needs just a little bit of a boost. In terms of off season moves, a couple like free agent signings to fill out the rest of the minor league roster, brought a couple guys back. But pitching wise, I felt like let's, let's leave it. It's been a top pitching staff in all of baseball. Really no reason to go out and change it too much. Really the only thing I'm probably gonna do is move Robbie Ray and try to get us a better third baseman. That's kind of the area I feel like we need to upgrade. Aranda just really isn't cutting it. And I feel like if we wanna compete with the Rangers, we wanna compete with some of the other teams in the league, we gotta step up our offense a little bit. 
lineup wise, we brought in Orlando Arcia. I signed Edmundo Sosa back. For some reason, he wasn't added to the 40 man. So he got picked up in the Rule 5 draft. After the Rule 5 draft, I saw that Arcia was still available. So I decided to pick him up. Had an okay season last year, had an okay season the year before. If he can just come off the bench, help us out a little bit, be, an, be a depth piece, platoon guy, we'll be fine. I think he'll do just, just that. And then the, un, the other move that I made was Josh Naylor. And again, two pretty good seasons. I felt like, you know what? We could use him, helps us out, gets another lefty bat in that righty lineup, and we're looking pretty solid. So this is kind of what we're looking like. And as you can see, Canzone is a guy that I really wanted to get into the team. Unfortunately, he's just really not developing like I would have hoped. I think if we would have put him in from day one, we could have potentially seen him grow a little bit. But I think him is just like a, a role guy is probably his move. Also, Cade Marlowe was a guy that I wanted to get into the team. But again, just really hasn't happened. I know at, you know the, the story's kind of cool with him being a Savannah banana, now making it to the majors. But I just don't think he's going to be part of the team. So with that in mind, I think third base was the area I want to target. Norby's a guy that I want to let develop a little bit more. We have Kalnick, we have France, Naylor, O'Neill. Like the rest of the lineup is pretty sorted. Shortstop, I feel like we have the depth in the farm system that we can turn to another player if JP Crawford doesn't work out. I feel like we have Cole Young. He's right around the corner. And then we have Lazaro Montas who can come up, Montez who can come up and basically just be like that Teoscar replacement with the bat once we need him to so we've got a couple guys in the farm system and i feel like we're looking pretty good like i mean we even have these third base prospects but again i just don't know if they are the answer i would like to try to find someone that is like an elite tier third baseman right like josh rojas like don't get me wrong like last year he was pretty good but i don't think he's gonna do that again and you know the other options that we have i just don't see them being good enough to really take us to the next level and so the guy that I really wanted, right, was, where is he? He plays for the Reds. You might know his name, Ellie De La Cruz. I can't get him. The only way I can get him is if I throw in a player that I don't want to get rid of. And it requires someone like, I, I think the way that I got it done was it had to include, it had to include, who was it? I think it had to include Harry Ford. That was like really the only young player that got the deal done. Like I'll show you kind of what they, what they want for a deal. They want like Bryce Miller, O'Neal and Montes. I can't do that. I just can't do that. I just feel like that's way too much for um, Ellie De La Cruz. So I considered Machado, but he's kind of regressed coming off of like two not great seasons, actually three not great seasons. I considered Arenado who got dealt to the Phillies, but he's kind of in the same boat where like he really hasn't been amazing. So I was looking around. I'm like, who could we turn to? We could go Devers. I feel like he's a guy that recently signed that long-term deal. It is expensive. And I feel like he would just, he's probably, he's probably a Red Sox for the rest of his career. Another option that I looked at was J-Ram, a guy that, again, probably going to stay with the Guardians for the rest of his career. The reason I'm a little interested in J-Ram is he's really only got a couple years left on his deal at 33 years old. If, you know, the Guardians don't pan out, would J Ram be open to a move with only a couple of years left on his deal? And the Mariners, I could, you know, they've got the farm system to make a couple moves here and there. They could make that move. Is that a realistic thing? Definitely not. But I'm looking around the league. I don't really know who else I could get. Uh, Keep Brian Hayes really hasn't done it. Uh, you got Suarez, which I don't want to bring back. Nolan Jones. There really aren't many other options. You know, like Austin Riley, Josh Young potentially i just feel like j ram is a fun pickup and i don't think he'd be that hard to get rid of plus like he's cheaper than robbie ray so we're pretty close right there we're pretty close right there um let's get let's get rid of somebody else that i just don't see us using so let's go with maybe one of these guys he's 23 68 overall let's see do they want him that works a little bit and then what else will i throw in let's throw in let's go with i could have thrown freelander in there um let's go robert mccauley that doesn't get the deal done that's unfortunate let's go rodriguez that doesn't get the Cade marlowe bill knight does bill knight was somebody that's just been kind of chilling in the farm system so if that gets the deal done j ram welcome to the team all right, so next year's salary is still a little bit lower than what we have currently this year. JP Crawford comes off the books, Arcia comes off the books, Teoscar comes off the books, and that's what, 27 mil? That's that's a big pickup if we really wanted to go out 
and go that route. But I feel like when you look at the team here, you know, we've got Castillo, who's got one more year on his deal, right? We've got Logan Gilbert, who I just extended long term. Kirby still got a couple years of arbitration. Bryce Miller, same thing. Emerson Hancock, same thing. Brian Wu's going to be in the same situation. So I feel like pitching wise, we're the same, if not going to get better. Estevez is a guy we got to keep an eye on. He is 33. He might regress a little bit. But outside of that, when you look at the age of our pitching staff, is Estevez really the only guy besides Castillo who's over 30? He is. So we have two players over 30. It's a young squad. We we have we have young pitchers coming up as well. I've got a couple guys on waivers. That's why it's looking a little thin for Triple A. And then if you look at the lineup here, JP Crawford's 31. You've got 25 for J Rod. You've got J Ram who's 33, 28. 31, 30, 26, 25, 23. I mean, this is a young team. This is a good squad. I actually like this team that we put together. I'm excited to see what we can do. So we're currently ranked first. We've got eighth contact, fourth power, first pitching. I feel like we're one of the best teams in baseball. Let's we'll see if it actually happens. So I didn't make any trades this year because I didn't think we needed any. And I think we did pretty well. 162 won the division. Just saying we won the division. Taking on the winner of the wild card. So yeah. We did, we did pretty good having the one seed. And team rankings wise, we are 12th for batting average, which is a little disappointing. Seventh though for runs. So we're a top 10 offense in terms of run production. Cubs apparently are just like the best in baseball. Holy cow. Okay, so in terms of pitching, let's take a look and see what we've got going on here. We were the best pitching staff in all of baseball with ERA. So I'd like to see that. No awards, no league leaders. Judge is back on top with the MVPs. I think it's because Bichette went to the, the Giants. I think that's what happened. Solaire was a name I looked at. Solaire was a name I looked at and uh, I probably should have signed four mil too. Should have signed him instead of Teoscar. Should have signed him instead of Teoscar. He, he was sitting there and I was like, I really think I should sign him and I should have half wins it on the other side Ryan McMahon was a name I considered at third base has a really good MVP like season Wheeler and McClanahan are the Cy Young winners Logan Gilbert in the race there batting title was low and Stevenson you had Alvarado and Minter as the relievers of the year and then Owen White was the rookie of the year along with Tacoa Roby okay okay so I think this is gonna be messed up oh yeah all right, let me talk about my players that I'm taking off of the playoff team. And you'll, you'll see why the playoff roster. Arcia, he wasn't bad, right? Like, it's not great. It, no, he was pretty bad. He was pretty bad. Um, Dylan Coleman also was pretty bad this year, which is super unfortunate. So there's that. We've also got Brash, who's regressing and was also pretty bad this year, too. So again, very unfortunate. And then Aranda also got sent down. There was a player who did get his debut this year, had 49 at bats. He was a September call up. It wasn't great but the progression looks pretty good. I definitely want to get him into the team next year. And I'm trying to think if anybody else got their, their call up. No, I can't think that. I think that was it. Well, there was somebody that did get the call up. You'll see in a second. Pitching rotation wise, this is what we're going to rock with for the postseason. Brian Wu was fantastic. He uh, pitched in 28 games, had 74 innings. He was good. He was really solid. I liked the per the performance he had and then ashby ended up moving into the long relief role once our bullpen started to have some some high inflated eras but aaron ashby definitely held it down in the middle relief role and the long relief role palencia came up only pitched two thirds of an inning but got the job done leclerc 17 innings got the job done i like to see that we've got campbell who again was really solid again like again i don't know why i said again twice there but he was solid for a second year in a row, Brandon Hughes came up as a lefty, gave us five innings, was solid, plus six holds. Pretty impressive. Like to see that. And then we've got Estevez, who in the setup role was reliable. Like to see that. And then, of course, Munoz. I give him an extension and he starts to regress. Not ideal. Luis Castillo is starting to regress. We've got one more year of him, but he was still really good. And he is regressing pretty quickly. So not ideal next up was logan gilbert who is going to be our new ace moving forward i think castillo is going to be in the three spot but gilbert unbelievable season kirby same thing really really reliable these two you've got castillo who we talked about bryce miller is also regressing which is unfortunate but he was good and then emerson hancock had a fantastic season so pitching is starting to regress and uh i'm not i'm not liking that jp crawford was terrible this year he was so bad he was so bad. Um, so I took him out. 
uh, you'll see for who Cal Raleigh was also not the best. We've got Josh Rojas, who again, average wise, not bad, not bad off the bench. Teoscar power numbers weren't the greatest. Again, it looks like he's an every other guy. Like 2024 was bad, 25 was good, 26 wasn't that great. Yeah, so unfortunate. Uh Julio Rodriguez was pretty good, I would say. That was that's a pretty good season. I'm pretty happy with that. Ty France was also very reliable. We've got J Ram who hit 26 home runs, 100 RBIs. Josh Naylor had a good season. Power numbers aren't as good as I would have hoped, but it wasn't a bad year. Tyler O'Neill though. 36 home runs and 100 RBIs. I can't be upset with the average and on-base percentage being that low. Kalnick definitely took a step back. Uh, it says he's regressing, but like, eh. Uh, Norby, better. He's improving. Not the best, though. Like, I really was hoping for a little bit better with him and Aranda, but it's not really working out. I'm going to give him one more shot because, like, again, it's not a terrible season, but you know what? We I don't. Do we have another second baseman that we could turn to? Aranda. <laughs> it's really or Hendricks. Could Hendricks play second base? He could. Yeah, he could. We could we could turn to him. Or uh Celestine could do that. But you guys saw it. You guys saw it. Cole Young got his call up. Harry Ford, though, I need him to be better. But Cole Young got his call up. He played in 174 games. I actually called him up at the trade deadline because Crawford was doing so bad. And he was pretty good. So team's looking solid. I think the only thing I need to do here is that. Lefty DH, we're going to go with Teoscar for the postseason. And this one doesn't matter because it's no DH. So here we go. I mean, this is this is the, the time we got to shine. We are going to be facing the Rangers or the Yankees. I don't really know who I'd rather face. I guess it is going to be the Yankees, though. So let's see what we can do here. Losing the first two is not ideal. Um, we get swept. What? Okay. Uh, the Yankees ended up winning the World Series. What is their team that they're so good? Like, let's take a look. Peraza, Volpe, Judge. They got Pete Alonso. Okay. Jason Dominguez is up to... Oh, they, they've just got Rodon, Cole. I don't know. I feel like we should have done way better. Getting swept is unbelievable. Unacceptable. Uh, let's run it back with the same team. Maybe make a little splash. I don't know. Kershaw retired with the Yankees. Okay, so Teoscar, I'm done with. Arcia, no thank you. Estevez, I'm worried he's going to regress so i'm gonna say no jp crawford i'm only gonna bring back because you know he's kind of kind of a fan favorite uh leclerc has been good but at the age of 33 i am a little worried about regression he also wants like double the salary i don't know i don't know I also he's probably not gonna improve because he's at 79 he's only got c potential so i'm gonna say no and then josh rojas has been good he is 32 though and he wants six mil all right, I guess we're going to have to change up the team a little bit. That's okay. You know what? We've got the money to do it. I guess I could have paid those guys. Um, so, ooh, some of these things are on auto. Good thing I paid attention to that. I'm going to take, let's see, who did they sign? Let's let's withdraw these offers. I don't want those offers. Okay, feel good about this. I feel good about this. I feel like, let's see, we're going to have Cole Young here, right? Norby could potentially be replaced this offseason, which would move him to the bench, which... It's not the worst thing. Outfield wise, Montez is going to get the call up. And I think in terms of other positions, maybe oh, Gonzalez definitely needs to get a chance. He looks pretty good. I know he's a top prospect in the Mariners organization. So now looking at the team, I feel like we're pretty good. Offensively, we're definitely still lacking. It doesn't help that Kelnick really didn't step up last year. Man other guys towards the bottom of the lineup need to step it up too so maybe this will be the year i feel like we're good though like man where did we pitching wise i think we're still pretty good too could use an arm or two out of the bullpen but like realistically i feel like we're a way better team than what we're doing in the postseason brash being bad now sucks um that is not ideal but i don't really know what else to do i guess just get another really good bullpen arm i think that's what we could use i we did allow quite a few runs in the postseason i am worried a little bit about the players regressing in the rotation but i don't know i feel like we've got a good squad i just got offered this trade and i feel like i should take it i feel like it's too good to pass up not because i think it's like a a player that like is gonna improve the team so much but Team control for the foreseeable future. Uh, 
reliever, like sixth man in terms of a rotation. Yeah, it hasn't been fantastic, but Hayden Wesneski for Prelander Baroa, who I'm I'm just not gonna use. He's just not developing. I can't get him into the team. And Wisniewski could be a decent option for the bullpen for us because, you know, it's never bad to have plenty of players in the bullpen. And I could use one if Coleman doesn't do well. As you can see, I've, I've made I've made a splash. Garrett Cole, uh, Garrett, Garrett Coleman? No, Garrett Crochet. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna help us out a little bit. But you can never have too much depth in the bullpen. Yes, he is out of options, but yeah, we gotta take that trade. Right, let's see what we can do in season four. Season four. All right, so here we go. The team, basically the same. We're just gonna start playing some matchups, right? Like I think Gonzalez could potentially sneak into the team. I didn't realize his hitting stats developed as like well as they did. Like 68 contact isn't the worst, but as you can kind of see, I think Kalnick is only going to face lefties. JP Crawford is going to be our backup along with the Ronda for the infield. Then we got Gonzalez and Kalnick as the main backups for the outfield. This is what our team is going to look like. And then versus lefties, like I said, Kalnick's going to hop in and we're going to have something like this. I might actually go like that. Ooh, but then the lefties. Okay, so maybe something like that. For the lefties where we, we move it around a little bit pitching wise as you can see Wesneski is going to pop in we've got Coleman Ashby Crochet Campbell who's the lowest rated but he's been really good we've got Wu Hancock and then everybody else so I'm worried about Castillo I'm worried about Miller a little bit but we do have Frazier we do have Ricks if we really need to turn to him also Ford and then we've got a couple guys on waivers which I hope don't get claimed in Hernandez who I signed to a one-year deal Rucker we got Palencia Salcedo and then Gilbreth and then these guys who uh Willie Sanchez up to a 63 we drafted him in season one and then Harry Booker I think was last year's draft or the year before but he's not going to feature so don't worry about him otherwise yeah the team's looking pretty good bill swain let me show you where i got bill swain just in case he pops up in the bullpen let me let me find bill swain where there he is he was a free agent in 2025 so there there you go so that's it that's really the that's the team we are currently ranked second who's first it is the rays the Rays are first. Let's go take a look and see why they are first. Like, how good is their team? That is the Blue Jays. I need the Rays. McClanahan, Bradley. Okay, so pitching's pretty good. I am worried about Glasnow and Gosman regressing, so that could really help us out. They have Savale. Ba okay, so they do, they do have some other pitchers they could turn to if need be. Lineup-wise, let's see what, what's going on here with the Rays. Rosarena, Anderson, Franco, Lau, Low, Diaz. Okay, that's a good team. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good team. I feel better though. This season was a little difficult. Things didn't go to plan and we only won 91 games, which sounds crazy. But again, the Rangers apparently were just the best team in baseball, which I got to check it out. I mean, you know what really hurt us? How, how are they this good? Their pitching is nasty. Of course, Estevez held it down for the Rangers. Tough. Okay. So what about the lineup? What do they got? They got a nasty. Oh, they do have Dylan Cruz. I forgot about that. And this guy was first year draft i remember that they don't have wyatt langford up they don't he's only a 78 okay i mean the offense is insane i was kind of hoping they would have regressed a little quicker unfortunately they didn't we do have a league leader it's julio rodriguez he was absolutely insane 9.2 war on the season and if we look at awards hank aaron so that's really all we got out of this entire thing he finished second to otani in mvp yelich won it on the other side you got wheeler and dylan cease as the cy young winners and then a rosarena along with mcmahon who was the batting title winner reliever of the year goes to caleb ferguson and jordan romano and then nico cavadas and ty madden were the rookies of the year montes just missed out okay so i already know this is going to be a mess I, actually it's not i think the only other player is actually no this is yeah this is how i had it okay so i called up carrie frazier for his debut he started five games went two and three with a just shy of a four era with a 1.2 whip which is giving me a little bit of confidence to potentially put him into the rotation for the playoffs sounds crazy i know but the thing is luis castillo is down to an 87 already so not great yeah four era 1.3 whip isn't the worst his fip was 4.2 which is a little bit worse than what his era states but like he's one of those guys where like man he wasn't that great same thing with bryce miller who just kind of 
stopped being decent. I don't understand what happened. Again, it's not a terrible season, but when you look at what the other pitchers did, it doesn't help. Like our team as a whole, pitching wise, really took a step back. And if you look at team ERA, we dropped down to eighth, which again, it's a top 10 pitching staff, but it's still not that great compared to what we've been at. And when you look at like, let's see, the Rangers are number two. Oh, that was batting average. Uh, ERA, you've got the Rangers at number three, right? They're they're there. You know, we're eight, but like not ideal. Team ranking wise for batting average, Rangers were number two, Astros were number six, and we're number eight. So like we're still in a very tough offensive division. And I guess that does kind of make things a little bit more easy to digest, easy to swallow because like our pitchers are facing really good opposition with the Astros and the Rangers being so good offensively. But at the same time, like we need them to be good. So Brash was really good in 30 innings, which is good. Wesneski started off really bad. He had like a four and a half ERA pushing five. Luckily he turned things around. We've got Ashby who was good. Coleman, not great. Crochet was fantastic and Munoz held it down. So I need to get rid of, Cro I got a Coleman, not Crochet. Coleman needs to get sent down. But the thing is like, I don't really have any other guys that I can really turn to because Campbell also regressed a little bit. So I don't really know who I can turn to right now. Why is Gilbreth pitching? Oh man, what do we do here? Do I go like that for the, the postseason? That's too many lefties. I got to get another righty in here. So maybe... Gilbreth gets sent down, and then we call uh, maybe Hernandez. That that could be a move because I don't really have anybody else that I can turn to that I trust unless we lack like Frazier gets into the mix. So I think Hernandez is going to get called up, and then we'll send down Gilbreth for now, and hopefully that works. Otherwise, we're we're in trouble. We're in trouble. The pitching staff kind of took a step back this year when I really needed them to do well. Kirby was good, but Gilbert, man, what happened? Hancock, what happened? 1.2 whip though, I can work with that. Four ERA, not the worst. But when you're giving me a 3.1 the year before, I need you to continue to do well. And even Brian Wu with a five ERA and Bryce Miller with a 4.2. So like, what do we do here? Does Brian Wu get kicked out? Do we go to like the, the, the different guy, the Frazier? What was his name? Kerry Frazier as a fifth starter? Like that's the tough part. I feel like we we should be better. Realistically, Wu probably won't start because we'll rock with like the four man rotation. But <sighs> Helnick, 64 games. He was okay. You know, Norby, not as good as I would have hoped. He's up to an 85, and you would think with those attributes he'd be better. Just really didn't put it together. Cal Raleigh continues to just be a backup catcher now. Cole Young definitely had a little bit of a sophomore slump. Things really didn't go to plan. And looking at the team as a whole, we saw uh, J-Rod was fantastic. Crazy good season. You know, Ty France behind him definitely took a step back in terms of the average and the on-base percentage. But again, 27 home runs. I can't complain about that. J-Ram, still good. Naylor, still good. O'Neal, fantastic season. Aranda came in for Norby, stepped it up for sure. Had a really good year, almost a 300 average. Gabriel Gonzalez stepped in for Montez, who got sent down. Who, again, not great. 18 home runs, you know okay uh harry ford again not great and then jp crawford stepped in and was good 360 470 on base percentage in 40 games so yeah really small sample size but when he came in he was really good so we're gonna rock with that so i don't really know what to do from here because the team is clearly gonna struggle offensively with some of the better teams and one of those teams that was good offensively the astros kirby gilbert hancock against Valdez or against Javier Valdez Brown and the highest ERA these pitchers have is a 3-6 well we have a 4-3 and a 4 I mean we don't have a choice we got to go with it so game one our lineup's not set okay okay everything's good to go we win the first and the second there we go but we're taking on the Rangers now not ideal not ideal so Hancock Miller Kirby Gilbert winning it in two games was probably the best possible outcome because I don't really want to go to the four starter and with the Rangers having their number one two and three to start off the series not ideal not ideal at all so lineup wise who who's cool Ooh, man O'Neal I need you to step it up bud I need I need better I can't I can't have a 143 in the lineup so here we go we gotta we gotta we gotta put our best foot forward not a great start we do get that win though Kirby please Gilbert 
keeps us alive, Brian Wu. Is he... I gotta have faith in our guys. Gotta have faith in them. They get the job done. There we go. And we're back to the top of the, the rotation, essentially. So, um, I think we still... Yes, maybe... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me... Let me double check how we did this. So this was Castillo that got the win there. Munoz, oh, Munoz blew the save. That's not great. So Hancock, okay, okay, okay. So we went through all five starters. All right, so we're back to the top of the rotation, which works, which also means I probably could move this around a little bit where like maybe Gilbert gets moved up a day. Maybe everybody gets moved up a day. So like, like this and like that, I think that works. Yeah, so it should be what? Hancock, Kirby, Gilbert. Yes, perfect. And we're taking on the Twins, who I don't think we've seen their lineup. So let's go take a look at their lineup really quick just to get an idea of what they've got going on. It's not a bad team. It's not a bad team. It's not a great team. Offensively, I think we're better. Pitching-wise, though, with Freed, Ryan, Scooball. Yeah, that's a good pitching team. Jeez. All right, we got to get past the Twins for the World Series. That's a good start. That's a better start. And we're one game away, a sweep. And um, we're taking on the Cubs, who have been unbelievable in this. I think this is their third out of four seasons, something like that. I mean, Bueller at the top, Steele, Stroman, Wicks. Okay. Interesting mix of players. How did Prelander do this year? Didn't pitch at all in the majors. Okay. Interesting squad. Let's take a look at it offensively, because, like, clearly something's like crap. They got Ellie. How did they get Ellie? They traded for him last year. What? I mean, ha PCA had to have been part of the trade, right? You would, yeah, PCA was definitely part of the trade. Okay. Okay, so they got Ellie, Swanson, Hap, Morrell, Chen. Oh, man, this is, okay. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a team. This is going to be a team for sure. All right, I've changed up the rotation a little bit. Everyone's full stamina, so I'm going to go Kirby, Gilbert, Wu, and then after Wu, it's Miller, then Hancock. Hancock's like struggling the most out of our starters. So I felt like let's go with our best foot forward. And that's a good start. But we do lose the second one. So coming home, we gotta we gotta establish dominance here. That's a good start. One win. One win. That's all we need. That's all we need. One win. We're at home. And you know what? It feels like a good day to wear. Where are they? Days once. We're rocking the city connect. It's time. Let's win it at home here. George Kirby or Logan Gilbert? Logan Gilbert's having a fantastic postseason. He's on fire. We're facing Walker Bueller. This is a perfect matchup here. I like it. Let's do it. Starting it off, we're going to not allow a double to start the game. All right. We get out of the inning, so that doesn't matter. But we don't get a hit, so we can't. We got we to gotta get on base. That's a good start. Lead off walk. Come on anything nothing just the leadoff runner and that was it okay another leadoff runner come on a fielder's choice and a fielder's choice love it single and then <sighs> three runs off two home runs we gotta we gotta do better walker bueller's a tough matchup but we had back-to-back -back innings with leadoff runners and we didn't do anything with it we still don't have a hit in the game which is not good but we do get one there i'm gonna try to steal second he gets in the scoring position there we go ty france gets us on the board three to one game now logan gilbert allows the run i was kind of hoping he would have gotten out of there okay it's okay i feel still pretty good about the team here we got it second and third with one out second and third with one out just play it safe play it safe Play it safe, man. Oh, man. All right. Not a... Okay. Um, That that just happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just happened. Uh, We're just going to... Okay. I, I guess... I guess that's... That's the ball game, huh? That's... That's the ball game, huh? That... That just happened. And Prelander Barrow is going to come in to close it out. All right, game six, away from home. We need to be on our A game. We cannot go to game seven, and that's not a good start. Not a good start, but they don't score, so there we go. So still 0-0. Zero, zero. I don't feel good. Something just like, after getting whopped. Whopped? That's not a word. Whooped. I was going to say walloped. 
and whooped at the same time and it came out as whopped that that's not right but we get a home run thanks to j-rod a two run shot and we're up to nothing okay so after getting walloped eight one you know you definitely need to come back and win right we um, also win the world series so two nothing cole young's on first double play not ideal i mean it's still a close game man two Ooh. Ooh. Okay, two nothing. I don't feel safe. Two is not enough. It's it's not. Um, sack fly brings in one, a single. I think Kirby's done. We're gonna go to Wisniewski here, and he gets the out. All right, two one game. Had to take out Kirby, but we do get the triple, which I feel like the sack fly should. Oh. He gets on base on an error. Okay, that that works too. Steals out of the game. And let's see if Wesneski can at least give me like another inning. I, I lied. Okay, that not good. Not good. But he does get Coleman gets us out. It's tie ball game. Just like that. That's not what you want. Uh, two lefties are in. Let's go to Ashby. And it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, does Fry hit lefties better or righties? He hits righties better, so let's leave him in. And then we'll go to the righty here in. Let's go, let's go Brash. He gets us out. Ninth inning, it's it's literally this inning. That's not good, neither is that. Single though, Harry Ford, please. Keeps it alive for Cole Young to be a hero. He grounds out. Strikeout, strikeout. All right, to extras we go. A walk is a good start. Can we get the stolen base? We do. He's in scoring position against the former Mariner in Baroa. And Ty France brings in the run. Just what we needed. Two run home run from Cal Nick. We got the three run lead. And now it comes down to Munoz to close out the game. A ground out, a ground out, and a fly out. There we go. World Series. Whew. MVP goes to Kelnick with that clutch home run. Playoff MVP was Ty France. And if we look at the pitching as a whole, I mean, Logan Gilbert held it down when we needed him the most. Everybody else was, was okay, wasn't terrible. Castillo gave us nine innings of really good uh, bullpen work. Couple others, Ashby was really solid. Actually, the bullpen as a whole besides Crochet was, was pretty good. Offensively, we've got J-Rod who was fantastic france was unbelievable j ram kind of quiet same thing with nailer actually the whole heart of our lineup was pretty bad oh boy no wonder why we struggled we just weren't scoring runs but it doesn't matter because we won the world series in the end and i hope you enjoyed the rebuild if you did thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content and i'll catch you all in the next video check out this one this is what youtube recommends that you'll enjoy i think you'll enjoy it that's it peace